Good morning. It's great to be here. My talk today is really asking the question, if we've got big data, do we need bigger governance? And my answer to that is really, no, I don't think we need bigger governance. I think we need better governance, and we need engaged governance. And I'm going to tell you what I mean by that as I go along. But first of all, I just wanted to give an outline of what I'm going to talk about. So I'm going to talk about governance to give you some theory and some basis for what follows. Talk about some of the challenges of big data. And then talk about engaged governance. So what is governance? And I'm taking a definition that actually has been around for a long time. But it's basically saying that governance is the complex mechanisms, processes, relationships, and institutions through which citizens and groups articulate their interests and mediate their differences. And so governance is, part, is really describing the, the um, ecosystem for how we actually sort things out. And there's good reasons why you need governance. And I make a distinction between governance and regulation, which is Regulation is more about the formal processes of law. So when we think about governance, a key part of that are institutions. So these can be national institutions, but in terms of medical research, they are also IRBs. They are the organisational um, elements that actually decide whether research can go ahead or not. You also have people, and I would add to this sort of uh, the group of people who really make differences, such as Kathy Hudson and Francis Collins. So people are really important. The heads of IRBs, the heads of um, professional societies, they are all making decisions which actually determine how research is carried out. And I would include PIs, actually, in that, as well as the people who are in the lab actually making things happen. In addition, there's policy, and by policy I include law, because I think we're seeing big changes within Europe about data protection, which will have an implication for medical research. But also, we have organisations such as um, the American College of um, Medical Genetics that actually set out a policy on genetic testing. And there's also part of this compliance mechanisms, so procedures that make things happen and SOPs, protocols that people have to follow. In addition, there are compliance mechanisms, carrots and sticks, and these work in different ways to actually modify behaviour and uh, help uh, make things happen. So Braithwaite and Ayers talk about a pyramid where you have carrots at the bottom, and then you have sticks at the top. And it's getting that balance right so that in actual fact we have a system that facilitates research but also um, puts protections in place for individuals. So all of these together create a governance system that actually enable research to happen but also data to flow. But each context is really a cocoon where there are certain norms and values that actually decide behaviour and what the expectations are. So what are the challenges for big data? So data flows, it crosses borders, it moves between people, it can be replicated, Unlike samples, it's, t it's um, something that can easily be copied, be shared, be moved around. And our technology is really facilitating this. And so the Nuffield Council on Bioethics um, produced a report just recently, and I was a member of that working party. And one of the things that we were really focusing on was the reuse of existing data and the linkage of data with other data sets. And we were thinking about this in terms of big data approaches. And what is key about these two issues is that really we don't have good governance structures to actually um, protect individuals, but also um, make sure that uh, there is not a loss of public trust by these activities. 
So what are some of the challenges of our current governance system? First of all, it is all focused at the beginning of the research process, right at the start. So all of our oversight is at the beginning. It's very much concentrated on um, expert committees. And it's not really designed for networks where data flows. Expert committees, as Cathy said the other day, actually decide things in different ways. And this is problematic because if your data is flowing through different jurisdictions or being shared, you want to make sure that the, the agreements and how that is done are the same so that you're not actually running into kind of roadblocks. And this is problematic because we don't actually have um, decisions which are uh, acknowledged across jurisdictions, as our systems are basically nationally based. And they're underpinning this is a one researcher, one jurisdiction, one project model. And I think this is problematic when we're starting to talk about big, big data approaches and the use of new technologies. So another feature of our current governance system is it's very much focused on consent. And it's largely paper-based. There are innovations in actually obtaining consent um, electronically or digitally, but um, in, it's largely um, a face-to-face, paper-based uh, process. And the mechanisms for engaging people after that tend to be quite limited. Sorry. Uh, so, <laughs> I can't go back. So yes, can I go back? Yes, I can. Um, so, and, and one of the things that happens is because we have consent at the beginning and it's not part of an ongoing process, it means that we put a lot of effort, particularly in Europe, to make data anonymous. And because data flows, this is a bit like putting a gate in the middle of the field. It's really going to be um, less effective over time, especially as we start to get more and more data sets together and the disclosure risks increase. So what's my vision? What do I think that we should be aiming at? And I think it is there's something that I'm calling engaged governance. And there's kind of um, different ideas that have been floating around about governance. So one of the features, I think, of engaged governance and something that came out of the Nuffield Council report is that it's all about trust. So our previous system really focused on consent, but maybe what we should be doing is talking about trust. And trust is one of those things where it's difficult to quantify, although we're seeing more and more empirical studies which are asking patients, participants, and citizens what they think of trust. But it's also something that uh, you definitely know when you don't have it. So I think that we should be moving towards more participant-centered in governance and thinking about what patients, participants, and citizens want. So expanding our scope and thinking about how we do that. And we have to develop mechanisms where our cocoon of medical research is actually tapping into the concerns of society. We know that um, uh, people are concerned about private companies using their data. They are concerned about data that they give in one context being used in another without consent. And we need to think about how we actually um, engage with those issues and bring those discussions into how we design governance systems for big data. So one of the things that my team's been working on is dynamic consent and how we can use technology to actually put in points along the flow of data to actually engage with individuals using technologies to do that. And so while dynamic consent is focused on consent, obviously, it's also more of a platform to engage people and let them know about what's happening to their data um, in terms of medical research. And that's in conformity with the direction of travel in terms of legal requirements within Europe. The question is, how do we maintain the 
chain of trust. How do we ma maintain trust when data is being moved along a, a pathway and shared? And so we need to think about kind of what we mean in terms of custodians of data, stewards of data, owners of data. And I think this is where we really need to think about governance mechanisms. And so the Nuffield Council actually said that this is a duty on researchers to promote and protect the legitimate interests of those who provide data about themselves. But any governance mechanisms that we bring in must actually be proportionate. They must be mechanisms that aren't going to slow down research, aren't going to slow down the development of knowledge, but also protect individuals. And I think we need to get that balance right, and we need to do some careful thinking about any mechanisms that we bring in. So mechanisms also need to be focused on carrots, and they also need to be put in the right places. There's no point in getting people to fill out a form with the same information three times. And I'm worried that some of our data access mechanisms are actually going to choke up the system and slow things down. But of course, we must have compliance mechanisms. And so the, the new data protection regulations within Europe will actually bring in fines of 100 million euros if that is appropriate. So that is a very strong um, compliance mechanism. So finally, um, I think what I'm saying is that as we move to global structures, we're, we're seeing that we're having bigger data. I don't think we really need bigger governance because one of the themes in this conference is how we take um, things that are done locally um, and how we build up so that we can actually see the whole picture while maintaining the link to the mosaic on the wall. And of course, this is the Alhambra. So we need to think about how we move from local to global, paper to digital, single projects to networks, and from patients to partnerships. And so I think that we need to start fleshing out what engaged governance looks like and how that fits in with our current governance structure, which has actually been developed incrementally and hasn't really been developed with these things in mind. So thank you.